Fuzzy TV. What is this on my shirt? I don't know what this is, but it's here to stay for the duration of the show anyway. Um, how many people are in the body of Christ? People alive today? I'm going to speculate today using my superior math skills to estimate how many people are alive in the body of Christ. So live, laugh, and love over that, my friends. This is Martin Sender. Welcome to another MZTV extravaganza or extravaganza, if you like. Some people say that, say it that way. There's no help for those people. Um, over the weekends, on Sunday, another In the Sin series came out. Rodney Paris taking 25-year-old audio cassettes made by yours truly and uh, bringing them to a modern audience who no longer have cassette players. So I'll put a link to that show down here. We're now doing, we did eight tapes from the Sovereignty series. Back in the day, I put these in, in cassette booklets. I mean, there were, you know, cassette cases, cases. I would make covers for them. I was designing even back then. So I made cool covers, and then you open the cassette case up, and there's eight tapes. One was called the Sovereignty Series. This one's the Sin Series. On Sunday, which was yesterday, I guess, that's tape number two called How to Be Free from Sin in Spite of Your Sin. So check that out. Um, some people are saying that there are advertisements running on my shows. I mean, I'm appalled by that. I've never seen one. I don't know why that's happening. Uh, I don't get any revenue from YouTube. And if I did, I, can, I would consider it dirty money. I honestly would. I don't even know how YouTube gets money to people who they advertise on. But I've never received a cent from YouTube. And if I ever did get any money from them because of this show, I would give it away. I'm not kidding you. It's dirty money to me. I don't like making money that way this is not a show that should be advertised i can't do anything about ads i'm appalled to think that there are commercials running it just it sickens me honestly so don't worry just i don't know i've i've never seen them i don't know why some people are getting them some people aren't but uh it's it even if i were getting anything from it which i'm not not a not a penny i would i would give it away because it's dirty money the only income I want is that which comes from the heart of you. That's the only, that's the only income I'm interested in because that's the income that God thinks I need to keep going. So Paul wrote to seven ecclesias. The Roman ecclesia, the Corinthian ecclesia, the Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and the Thessalonians. That's seven. How many people were in each ecclesia? Well, we can only speculate. At the end of Romans, in chapter 16, Paul mentions 29 people. He says, greet so-and-so, 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 among whom are, of course, Tryphena and Tryphosa. Some people have joked about me because they say, yeah, Martin, you're crazy. You think uh, Tryphena and Tryphosa were these hot twins, whatever. And they say, you know, when you're snatched away and you see Paul, the first thing you're going to say to Paul is, have you seen Tryphena and Tryphosa? I don't know. Maybe. It could be. So, I used to wonder why Paul was mentioning these 29 people in the Ecclesia. And then about 10 years ago it dawned on me, these are probably the only people in the Ecclesia of Rome. Because you know how it is, if you're at a podium and you're, you've won an award or something and you're gonna thank people, it's you just thank everybody or nobody because you're gonna miss people, right? So Paul's just going for it. Well, he's under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit so maybe it's the Holy Spirit who's remembering these people, not Paul. 
Could be. I don't know. But she's listing these people. There's 29 people. I believe that that's probably the total number of people in the whole Roman Ecclesia. But, okay, every in every household, there was several people. Of course, that doesn't guarantee that they are believers. So I'm just going to get crazy here. Yeah, just starting now. I'm going to start to get crazy right now. Um, let's say that there were 100 people in each ecclesia. I think that's a crazy number, but let's be crazy. And let's say that there were seven more ecclesias we didn't know about somewhere. So I'm doubling the number of known ecclesias that Paul wrote to. And I'm really quadrupling the number of people that were probably in it. So that will give us a total of 1,400 people. At which time you would say to me, Martin Zender, are you telling us that you think there were only 1,400 members of the body of Christ alive at the time of Paul? Yes, that is exactly what I'm telling you. And you might object and say, well, what about the periphery? You know, there are people on, on, on the periphery. What periphery? What periphery? There's no telephones, there's no, there's no internet, not even fax in Paul's day, not even fax. There's no postal service to speak of. It's not like word got out thousands of miles away. People gathered. If you were in the body of Christ, you found a local headquarters. Actually, you didn't find them. Paul established them. How did he do it? He went to the synagogue, of course he's speaking to Jews there, and then he went to the marketplace and people heard about Paul. I, I don't know how it happened, it was completely organic. Maybe he posted a sign on the telephone poles back then. Yes, yeah, see, telephone poles. Now maybe he posted a sign like a Martin Luther did at the church at Wittenberg, right? Maybe he posted meeting Hear about the risen Christ. Find out why he's the Messiah. Plus some special guests. Plus added attractions. The added attraction would be justification by faith apart from works of law. However these ecclesias started, it was ragged. It was grassroots. And I think 100 people per ecclesia is generous. And I think doubling the ecclesias, the known ecclesias, i.e. churches, is generous. Nevertheless, I have just come up with 1,400 people in the body of Christ alive during Paul's day. That just sounds right to me. It doesn't mean it's right. I'm just speculating. How many people were alive at the time of Christ? I'm glad you asked. Well, there were 300 million people on the earth at the time of Christ. Before I give you the percentage there, I would like to point you to Romans chapter 9 when Paul relates how Elijah thought that he was the only one left who had not bowed the knee to Baal. And God said, Elijah, I have reserved for me 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. 7,000? Out of how many people? Well, at the time of Elijah, there were approximately 1 million Jews. Ballpark figure. Pretty close. There's 1 million came out of Egypt. Anyway, um, so the percentage, if there was only 7,000 who stayed true to God out of 1 million, that gives us a percentage of 0.007. So 0 0.007 of the Israel population state were faithful to God and they did not give it up to the anti-gods. They did not give it up to the false gods. And as you know, the majority of Israel were slack. The majority of Israel were idolaters. Exhibit A, out of Egypt coming through the wilderness. Seems to me that two people out of the one million that came out. What's the percentage there? I don't know. Point zero 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 two. 
something like that. Two people out of one million came through. In every generation, whether you're talking about Israel or the body of Christ, you have the majority are apostate. So there's 300 million people around the time of Christ, so we'll, let's just say 300 million around the time of Paul, and we have what I believe 1,400 believers, true believers in the body of Christ, not feigned, feigned believers. It's possible to be a feigned believer, as Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 15. He mentions the pillars of faith, the death of Christ, the death of Christ for sin, his entombment and his resurrection. And some were not true believers, even among the few who heard Paul. You had to have gotten a letter from Paul in order to be in the body of Christ. He was body of Christ numero uno. There was no such thing as the body of Christ before Saul was called on the road to, Dam to Damascus. Can you imagine that? At one time, there was one guy in the body of Christ. One. And then on the first mission, and then on the first missionary journey, Paul talks to uh, Sergius Paulus, the proconsul on the island of Cyprus, and uh, he becomes a believer. He's the first Gentile to come into the body of Christ. Paul went to the house of Ananias in Damascus. He was probably a Jew. I don't know if he he believed or not. The whole thing was new. It was early. And things went slow, 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 slow. It was all word of mouth or the written letter, which was carried by a guy running, you see, a guy could have been riding a horse, could have been walking, but somebody tucked that letter to the Corinthians under his arm and took off to Corinth. We know that Phoebe took the letter to the Romans. The letter to the Romans. Paul wrote Romans in Corinth around 56 and when he, he mentions greet Phoebe first person he mentions so it was probably she who took the only copy of Romans the original letter to the Romans from Corinth to Rome During her time of passage, that was the safest woman on the planet. She was going to get through. Probably several days journey. Can you imagine where she, she put it at night? Does she have a, a satchel? Does she put it between her breasts? Does she put it under her pillow at night to make sure she doesn't lose it? She's not going to lose it. She didn't lose it. Thank you, Phoebe. Can you imagine Phoebe calling Paul? Uh, Paul, you're not going to believe this, but uh, my ship sank. Could you write that letter again? There was no other copy. So if there are 1,400 members of the body of Christ at the time of Paul, in a world population of 300 million, then one in every 214,285 people was a member of the body of Christ. One out of 214,285. What's the percentage? Point zero 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 zero. That's five zeros. Uh, let me repeat. Point zero 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 four six six six. That's the percentage of people on the earth at the time of Paul, who were members of the body of Christ. You say, well, Martin, since then, we've had the publication of the scriptures, we've had, uh, 
Morse code, then we have the radio, then we have television, then we have the internet. Uh, they, there must be millions in the body of Christ. Uh, no. Because the propagation of the material, in fact, I was going to say the propagation of the material, does not faith make. In fact, I will say that when the scriptures were completed, Paul completed the Word of God, Colossians 1.25, at that time it was easier to mix the evangels. If you have a mixed evangel, if you don't know there's a distinction between Paul and the circumcision, then you don't have the body of Christ. You, you don't have Paul's gospel. It disappears. But before the scriptures were gathered together, it was easier to keep it separate because Paul had his people out in the nations and Peter had his people in Jerusalem. It was easier. It, the, the, the lines were clear. But even then, the circumcisionists were coming in to Paul's people, particularly the, the Galatians. That's the one we have a record of. And, and they, were, they were mixing the evangels. But it was harder to mix the evangels then. Why is it easier? Because if you have one Bible and there, everything's got, all the letters are gathered together, then you look at the front cover and it says, Holy Bible, and this is all the Word of God. And so you, you just think it's all one thing. Paul continued the circumcision message, took it to the nations. And that's absolutely not the case. So I contend to you that it's easier to lose Paul's gospel with the publication of the scriptures. And then this, in 2 Timothy 3, Paul says, In the last days perilous periods will be present. Even in Paul's day, things started well and then they, they got they got sketchy. They got scarce. People were leaving. The excitement was gone. Ladies and gentlemen, 1,400 members of the body of Christ, that was the heyday. Let me repeat that. If there are 1,400 members, 1,400 members in the body of Christ in Paul's day, that's the heyday. And even though the population has gone from 300 million to 7.6 billion, you'd have to be a fool to think that the propagation of the material the broadcasting of the material equals more people believing because belief has nothing to do with how many copies of the scriptures are out there belief has nothing to do with how many times the any scriptural topic is broadcast on the internet in fact i will say this too when the scriptures were translated in, from latin to greek the word ionian was lost and it became eternal thanks to Jerome and the Vulgate. So now it's even harder to see the God's plan of salvation for all. But again, even before that when the scriptures were put together. Isn't that ironic? Isn't isn't that crazy? When everything's organized, there's fewer people. So Paul says the apostasy was coming. So the apostasy, I believe, started in his day, and it's continued. So things have degenerated. Degenerated. Speaking of generated, how many generations have there been since the time of Christ, since the time of Paul? Fifty. Uh, that's taking 40 years for a generation. Fifty generations. Again, I'm just speculating here. I'm just a guy sitting next to his refrigerator under a sign that says live, laugh, and love. I'm just speculating here, but I would call it uh, an educated guess. If you just 
total ballpark figure. If you take 10 people away from the body of Christ due to the apostasy every generation, you, you lose, by the time you get from Paul's day to this day, you lose 500 people. If you take, if there's 10 fewer people with each generation. Remember, th things aren't evolving, my friends. Things are not evolving. Because of cell phones and because of all this interconnectivity, we are less connected than ever. There's less interpersonal, there's fewer interpersonal relationships than ever. Yes, we have the Bible in every hotel room in America, top drawer, the Gideons, and nobody gets it. Nobody understands. Bible's the best-selling book in the world. So what? It doesn't mean that there are more believers. There aren't. In Acts, at Pentecost, that was the heyday. What, 3,000 came on that day? 3,000. Oh, boy, 3,000. That's a lot of people. No. 3,000 in one day because that was high times in Jerusalem. Miracles happening. Peter's making the lame walk, speaking in a language everybody can understand. So if you take 1,400 members of the body of Christ in the time of Paul and you get rid of 10 people every generation, which ends up being 50 generations, 500 people, 1,400 minus 500 equals 900. I have said even in the last few years before I did this epic math here that I would be surprised if there were 5,000 members in the body of Christ. I said more likely to be 500. Uh, 500 alive. I mean, there are many more if you take the dead of every generation, but not a lot many more. I could do that math too if you have 50, I'm not, I don't know, total members of, of the body of Christ. You could take 1,000, just a random figure, times 50, and you'd have 1,000 times 50, 50,000. 50,000 people in the body of Christ total. Sounds about right to me, actually. Total. Since the time of Paul, 50,000 people in the body of Christ. That sounds right to me. And 900 alive today. And Elijah's day, 7,000. Smart, how could there be any fewer in the body of Christ? Because they were pulling from a nation. That 7,000 was called from a nation. They started with a nice big group of people. Where did Paul start from? Nothing. There's no nation. It's one guy at the market, one guy standing around next to the synagogue, one guy talking to his brother. That's not calling from a nation. That's building something from scratch. And the scratch is pretty scratchy. I believe... It's just me. I got no scripture for this. I believe, I believe there are 900 people today in the body of Christ. 900. Are you rare? Oh, yes. You're rare.